Fresno State Bulldog football, a winning program built on tradition, expert coaching, academic excellence, and community support. The decade of the 80s has seen the emergence of Fresno State as an important force in NCAA Division I-A football. Some have compared Fresno State to Brigham Young and Arizona, football powers that exploded onto the national scene in the 1970s. In 1985, Oklahoma coach Barry Switzer forfeited his chance to have the Sooners named the unanimous choice as the nation's number one team. He paid tribute to Bulldog football by casting his number one vote for undefeated Fresno State. The Fresno State program has become a stepping stone for many to professional football. On any Sunday, you might see the likes of veteran wide receivers like Henry Ellard of the Los Angeles Rams or Stephon Page of the Kansas City Chiefs, both former Bulldogs. Stephen Baker, Fresno State's touchdown maker, is now making touchdowns for the New York Giants. Quarterback Kevin Sweeney, who broke an NCAA career passing record in 1986 and was in the running for the Heisman Trophy, is now a Dallas Cowboy. Michael Stewart, Fresno State's answer to Bo Jackson, was selected in both the Major League Baseball and NFL drafts in 1987. He's the hard-hitting strong safety of the Los Angeles Rams. Gene Taylor is a talented wide receiver for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. David Grayson, an eighth-round pick of the Browns, set the standard for linebackers at Fresno State in his brilliant career. Mike Withicombe honed his offensive line skills in Fresno and was taken by the New York Jets on draft day. And All-American defensive end Jethro Franklin now works for the Houston Oilers. In all, 50 former Bulldogs have donned NFL uniforms in the past eight years. In 1986, Fresno State, with 10 picks, was second only to Joe Paterno's Penn State team in the number of players selected in the NFL draft. The pros will come calling again in 1989 with linebacker Tracy Rogers leading the contingent of Fresno State seniors sought by the NFL. Rogers was the Big West Conference Defensive Player of the Year and he earned the Sporting News Award as the best defensive player in the nation during the week of November 14th. But the honors will not be limited to Rogers. Nine Bulldogs were named to first team all conference with three being named to the second team. And for the fourth time, head football coach Jim Sweeney has been named the Conference Coach of the Year. He's the guiding force behind the Bulldogs' rise to national prominence. His 11-year Fresno State coaching log includes four conference titles, three California Bowl appearances, and one of the winningest programs on the West Coast. Just completing his 24th season as a major college coach, Sweeney came to Fresno with expertise in the run-oriented Veer offense but has since put Fresno State on the football map with a proficient and powerful big play passing game, along with a pro-style running attack. We'll always lead with the pass, but running is the base for all offensive football because our offense showcases the ability of the athlete in a professional fashion. Fresno State put the teeth back into the running game in 1988, almost doubling their 1987 ground yardage total. Senior Kelly Skipper played a key role as Bulldogs piled up almost 3,000 yards on the ground. The first-team all-conference tailback in his fourth year as a starter became the second leading rusher in Bulldog history. When you come in as a freshman, they teach you the basic fundamentals of the game. And, uh, you know, you know the, uh, the better you learn it and the quicker, faster you learn it, you know, the more opportunity you will play. Uh, I think it's hard coming in as a freshman because you're young. And some, some high school coaches don't teach you the basic fundamentals. So uh, I think once you grasp things together, and, uh, there's great opportunities here to play. As far as our running game is concerned, we run traps inside and outside. We have the guard pull. We have tackle pull. We have uh, the basic toss sweeps uh, plays. We have the sprint draw plays. We have uh, power plays. We just we, we do a lot of things. We run out of split. We run out of out of eye, we run out of uh, one back set, we put the backs in motion. Uh, running backs in our offense basically are, are multi-dimensional, okay? We just don't run the ball. The running backs in our offense have to be able to pass block. They have to be able to run inside and outside. They have to be able to uh, uh, catch the ball out of the backfield, short and long. 
the primary thing I look for in a running back is toughness and then speed. When the players do leave our offense, they're ready to go into the NFL because our philosophy, our terminology, uh, the things that we do relate definitely to the NFL. Win with the run was so true. This is Jones, tries to get outside, and he does. He's to the 40. He could go all the way to the 10-yard line, and Myron Jones will score the touchdown. The Bulldogs' rushing leader and only returning starter in the backfield is junior Myron Jones, who averaged 5.1 yards per carry and ran for nine touchdowns. Fresno State's running attack was balanced by senior tailback Darrell Rosette, who responded to the call for an improved ground game with his finest year, including a career day against Pacific, in which he rushed for 148 yards on just 15 carries, caught five passes for 42 yards, and scored two touchdowns. A running back is only as good as his offensive line. The Bulldog system stresses pro-type blocking schemes. Here at Fresno State, Coach Sweeney has an offensive philosophy that makes football fun for the offensive linemen. Not only are we a passing team, which we do lead with the pass, but we are also a run team that involves a lot of pulling and screens and traps and the types of things that offensive linemen like to do. Our passing game is very sophisticated in the offensive line in that we are very, uh, we work very hard on, on blitz pickups. See, here at Fresno State, we see a lot of blitz. It's not like playing against some of the teams in the Midwest and those type of places where it's straight rush. We get a lot of blitz and line twists and the things that you see every Sunday on NFL football. So a kid that comes here has an opportunity to learn those skills. In the offensive line, in the running game, something that we really improved on in 1988 and hope to keep improving on through the years, is that uh, we're a run-oriented team and that we're a power game at times, and we're also a finesse game at times, uh, being that we do a lot of pulling with our offensive line, we do a lot of trapping, we do a lot of sweeps, we do a lot of screens. So we, we mix power with sophistication. Uh, we feel that, it's a, that this is a proving ground for young offensive linemen if they want to go on into the next level of football. Pass blocking is no less important in the Bulldog offensive scheme. Fresno State's freshman quarterback, Mark Barsotti, possesses the skills and size of a prototype NFL quarterback. He's a drop-back passer who nails the deep and out patterns, but his running ability has added a new dimension to the Bulldog offense. The offensive line played a key role in Barsotti's development, giving him time in the pocket to find his receivers. Barsotti's success is due in large measure to a gifted band of receivers. Senior split end Andre Alexander, Fresno State's leading receiver in 1988, was a study in perseverance. Touted as Stephen Baker's replacement in 1987, he was unable to show much in his first year. Through the patience of the coaching staff and his own hard work, Alexander came into his own in the 88 campaign with an average of 20 yards per catch. I had to learn how to block, read coverages. That's a part of coming to a big time Division I-A school. Uh, it's all part of that. You have to learn how to do other things. It can't be one-dimensional. And you have to learn how to have good work habits on and off the field. You have to work yourself. You can't just rely on practice to get you better. You have to be a person that wants to do it yourself. And stay the extra hours or come to days when you don't. Have practice and do a little something on your own. Read your playbooks a little more often. And that'll get you ahead. And get you in, in the game and get you some playing time. The things that we teach the receivers, like route conversion, um, releases and escapes, are things that they're going to have to use that sometimes are not taught to a lot of other, or at a lot of other schools around the nation that they can take with them and use when they get into the NFL. In the tradition of Ellard, Page, and Baker, junior split end Dwight Pickens fit right into the Bulldogs' big play passing offense. His talents were fully realized in a system that stresses precise routes, soft hands, and the ability to go over the middle and take the big defensive hit. Senior flanker Anthony Williams contributed with 21 and a half yards per catch average and played a key role on special teams. Dwight Pickens and Andre Alexander are off to the right side. And a wide split in the offensive backfield. Barsotti back, has plenty of time, now has to roll to his left. Looking deep, he has Craig Jones out there in the end zone for the touchdown! Tied with Pickens as Fresno State's second leading receiver was senior tight end Craig Jones. 
His size and skills allowed the Bulldogs to feature the tight end as an important part of the passing attack. Fresno State's known for, known for its great wide receivers, but the last couple years, the tight end's been catching more, and I think it's going to continue even more next year. Well, there's a tremendous gap uh, being opened in the tight end position, losing Craig Jones this year, who was our first uh, team all Big West uh, tight end. And although we have a tight end coming back, Rich Bartleski, uh, we'd like to get the experience of a junior college tight end to be able to come in here who's a little bit older, who is capable of stepping in and competing for the starting position uh, because it's, a, it's an area that we need to fill right now. The team concept is heavily stressed in the Fresno State football program. The success of the offense in 1988 was due in large part to a team defense that was ranked ninth in the nation, scoring three shutouts in 11 games and holding opponents to an average of less than 13 points a game. It was Bulldog defense that consistently gave the offense good field position and kept the pressure off the freshman quarterback. Yard line, second and seven, and here comes the sack, and down goes Lux. So once again, Fresno State's defense rises to the occasion. Senior linebacker Tracy Rogers led a defensive team that featured 11 all-conference players, including senior nose guard Chuck McCutcheon, sophomore Ron Cox, Rogers' sidekick at linebacker, and senior strong safety Tony Harris, and junior left corner James Williams. Uh, the consistency in play from the line to linebackers to the secondary has been excellent throughout the season. Our players go out on the field with goals set that they're going to win first down. We want to get the ball back. That's one of Coach Sweeney's big statements that we have for the defense is to get the ball back and that's with an interception, a fumble recovery, or just having a, get the ball back by uh, having them punt. They're ahead of a lot of players that may play at Texas who you know, don't have the opportunities to rush the passer as much as we do in our conference. And people throw the ball, throw the ball on the West Coast. A lot of our opponents that we schedule throw the ball. So you get a chance to pass rush, and that is what exploits a, a uh, defensive lineman's talents. The things that we've been able to do here at Fresno State in pass rush you know, with our defensive line and our linebackers in blitzing situations has uh, caused offenses uh, to keep them off guards. We've made uh, great quarterbacks uh, look pretty poor. Lawful teaches the best technique on the West Coast. As a defensive line, I'd say we're probably the best conditioned defensive line around. The coaches had some great game plans for us. They put us in position to win. We can compete with anybody. We're getting better and better. This program's going to be top notch in a couple of years. Nobody's going to be able to beat us. To throw again. There's Ron Cox to deliver the blow at the 44-yard line. His third sack of the year. The thing that we need to do, first of all, is our top three out of four inside linebackers are missing. Joe Gigantino, who has played a little bit this year. Brian Greer, who was second-team all-conference, started all 11 games. And Garnett Fountain, who started all 11 games. All three of those players are seniors and graduating, so I think defensively we need to bring in a couple of inside linebackers that can come in and make an immediate impact on the program. Well, obviously the, the loss of Tracy Rogers is a, is a big factor. Uh, we need to bring in a couple of outside linebackers because we need to find somebody that can replace Tracy. Coach Sweeney is a firm believer in having pressure off the corners and Tracy was put in a position such that he had to beat an offensive tackle, which for a guy of uh, Tracy's size and speed, it was hard for an offensive tackle to deal with Tracy because he was coming off the corner. For the fourth year in a row, we've won the scoring defense uh, championship. And two years ago, Jethro Franklin was the defensive player of the year. And then Tracy Rogers was the Big West defensive player of the year this year, which really speaks well for the program. I think Grayson and Hammond, uh, they started a tradition, you know, they're being here for four years and, you know, there's been great outside linebackers ever since then and inside too. Um, I think, you know, we've got Cox two more years here and now that I'm leaving, I mean, there's still going to be good outside linebacker support here probably throughout the ranks and hopefully we can keep that going all the way through and build a bigger bridge for outside linebackers and the whole team. Senior Tony Harris, who possessed the raw talent needed to be a fine defensive back when he came to Fresno State, took advantage of the program and became one of the top strong safeties in the country. 
One advantage for defensive backs at Fresno State is the expert coaching provided by a man who played in the NFL for 10 years. Rod Perry, two-time All-Pro defensive back for the LA Rams, is now the defensive backfield coach at Fresno State. His experience at the highest level of football creates a unique opportunity for future prospects. Every day in practice, you get a chance to develop your man-for-man -man skills. You get a chance to, we use the term bracket, learn how to double receivers at a short level, at a deep level. So once you get into the NFL, this is nothing that is new to you. I mean, these are the coverages that I, that I practiced for 10 years in terms of how to double, I'll say, a stalwart. So when you're getting those type of skills, you're getting that type of training every day. If you're here as a freshman, you get them for four years. If you're here as a junior college person, you're getting them for two. So you get a chance to develop these skills every day. You know, and we're fortunate enough to be in the passing league, known for the ability to throw the ball downfield. And they've had some great wide receivers in the past and great quarterbacks in the past, as well as some very good defensive backs. Now, you get a chance to hone your skills in terms of facing the passing game, in terms of developing your skills as a defensive back. At Fresno State University, where we've been really known for the passing the ball, you think of the Kevin Sweeney, you think of Henry Ellard and Stephon Page receiving the ball, you get a chance to match up against these type receivers in practice every day. I can't get coached by anybody better. You know, he's been there where I, hopefully I can go. You know, he's, he's shown me the ropes, you know, the, the things that, that, that it takes to get there. And, you know, he's been a great leader, I mean, on and off the field with me. The Bulldogs were top-notch on special teams in 1988. Junior cornerback James Williams broke through with an amazing six block punts in 11 games. Place kicker Steve Loop had to fill the shoes of an all-time conference scoring leader, Barry Belli. In his first game for Fresno State, he broke Belli's single-game scoring record and ended the season by hitting on seven consecutive field goal attempts. Fresno State has put it together on the football field with talented individuals, melding into a highly structured and well-disciplined team. Those individual skills are maximized in practice and in training, another area where Fresno State excels. Bulldog athletes have the advantage of training in one of the finest facilities in the western United States. And under Roberto Parker, the full-time strength and conditioning coach who has designed a program that is second to none. A football player must develop strength and power, flexibility and speed to become a better football player, and that's, that starts, in my opinion, in the strength program. Our main objective behind any strength program is to develop strength to reduce injuries is our first and foremost objective. After that, it's development of strength, uh, power, uh, confidence in his playing ability. An athlete who is stronger is going to compete with more confidence within himself. Uh, it doesn't come easily. I mean, athletes come here and they've never been exposed to a weight training program and they've got to push themselves. They've got to work hard. At it. They've, got to, they've got to sweat a little bit and they're going to experience some soreness and some degree of uh, muscular discomfort. But uh, it all pays off in the long run. Any recruit that comes in this weight room who sees it uh, can tell that we have put a lot of money and resources into it. Uh, we probably have some of the top equipment on the uh, lifting uh, conditioning market in this facility. Um, we've got Nautilus machines, you've got uh, weight benches, you've got multi-purpose racks, we've got carpeting uh, in half the room and, and uh, bumper flooring in the other part for Olympic lifting. We put a lot of energy, time and money into this weight room. The student athlete at Fresno State has the opportunity to compete at the highest level of intercollegiate sports. But the university's commitment is equally strong to the individual's academic pursuits. Well, the primary functions of the academic counseling office are to provide academic support services. And what we mean by academic support services are to provide tutorial services and personal counseling for our student athletes. We provide a study hall session, and in the study hall, we have uh, several tutors available for just about any subject that a student athlete might take, and that ranges from engineering uh, to 100 level math and calculus, uh, to very basic courses within the general education program. You got tutors for each class, each subject, you know, and they help you out to the farthest limit and uh, it make you feel more comfortable when you first come into college. The athletic department spends uh, uh, half a million dollars a year uh, in this program and uh, we have been extremely successful in helping the student-athlete to 
to be successful as a student. The mean grade point average has gone up within the athletic program since the academic support services have been offered. Uh, in addition, you also find, which is the most significant uh, change, is the, in the graduation and retention rate of student athletes. Uh, our particular university, we have a 70% graduation and retention rate, and that covers people who have either graduated or are still enrolled in school and making satisfactory progress toward receiving a degree. And that's the one where we are really stressing not only the grade point average, but we view our purpose is to help uh, facilitate student athletes' progress toward his degree because, I mean, that's why he's in college, to get a degree. Fresno State provides a strong foundation for the student athlete. In his pursuit of academic and athletic excellence, it's common for a student athlete to encounter a few obstacles along the way. For five years now, Fresno State has been helping athletes deal with their personal and emotional problems through SAP, the Student Athlete Assistance Program. Athletes can get advice and guidance in areas of physical, psychological, or chemical dependencies, illnesses, legal, financial, or marital problems. Fresno State is a program of total commitment to the student, to the athlete, to the person. The productivity level of the Fresno State Athletic Program is very high indeed. Fresno State has produced 25 team conference championships and 62 All-Americans since 1983. 12 of the university's 18 teams have been ranked in the nation's top 20, including two who hit the number one spot this past year. These successes have prompted sports writer John Hadley of the Sporting News to rank Fresno State among the top three athletic programs in the country, along with Notre Dame and Iowa. In sports writer John Hadley's words, the Fresno State program is not only impressive from its success in the field, but off the field as well. The community of Fresno has taken their collegiate program under its wing. The people have given their support not only in the stands, but monetarily as well. Much of the success of the athletic program is due to the efforts of the Bulldog Foundation, Fresno State's fundraising entity. It is one of the most productive collegiate support groups in the nation. Private donations from local residents in excess of $15 million have built, expanded, and refurbished athletic facilities, including Bulldog Stadium, the crown jewel of the Fresno State campus. The annual spring fund drive has contributed in excess of $11 million for athletic scholarships and recruiting over the past six years. Fresno State supporters have paved the way for their athletes to compete at the highest level. The nationally renowned Red Wave fans of Fresno State have the doghouse. Bulldog Stadium bursting at its seams. Standing room only crowds averaging well over 33,000 packed the 30,000 seat stadium for each of the Bulldogs home games. These overflow crowds have the community and athletic department on the track for stadium expansion. This contagious support is not limited to Bulldog Stadium. Over 12,000 Fresno State fans traveled to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena for the Bulldog Bruin matchup. Fans in Fresno and throughout the San Joaquin Valley were treated to nine Bulldog football telecasts, including two ESPN National Games of the Week. There are so many great reasons to come to Fresno State. Tremendous community support, academic excellence, great coaching, great tradition, quality campus and community life, top-notch athletic facilities and support services, and an outstanding football program.